Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles and welcome to another micro struggle. Today I'm talking about first order stochastic dominance or FOSD. And again, if you guys are finding these videos helpful, please like and subscribe. But let's go ahead and get right into it. Should be a pretty quick video on FOSD. So the idea behind first order stochastic dominance is basically to be able to tell which lottery is preferred to another lottery. So here's a motivating example. I've got two sets of lotteries. In the first example, lottery one, I've got a 25% chance of zero, a 50% chance of two, and a 25% chance of four. And then lottery two, you've got a 25% chance of zero, a 50% chance of three, and a 25% chance of five. So if I asked you which lottery would you prefer, you would most likely go for lottery two. And the reason you would go for lottery two is because you're gonna get a higher payoff at each percentage than in lottery one. Now in the second pair of lotteries, lottery three versus lottery four, notice that you've got a 10% chance of zero, a 50% chance of two, and a 40% chance of four. Lottery four, you got a 25% chance of zero, a 50% chance of two, and a 25% chance of four. So again, I ask you just to think about which lottery you would prefer. I personally would prefer lottery three. The reason I would prefer lottery three is I have a lower chance of getting zero and a higher chance of getting four as compared to lottery four. So even though the payoffs haven't changed, I have a lower chance of getting the low payoff and a higher chance of getting the high payoff. The chance of getting the middle payoff stayed the same. So I would rather have lottery three. So that's gonna be useful to sort of think about as we talk about first order stochastic dominance. Now, when we talk about FOSD, we're talking about the CDFs or the cumulative distribution function of each of these lotteries. Even though they're discrete, the lotteries are discrete, they have discrete outcomes, we can still make a CDF. So let's just plot L3 and L4 on this CDF, where I'll plot L3 in blue and L4 in pink. So you can see I've got a 10% chance of zero, a 50% chance of two for both of them, and then a 40% chance of four for L3, and only a 25% chance of four for L4. So if I plot these CDFs, you notice that f of x, or the lottery three, is always at or to the right of lottery four. And that's the basic idea behind FOSD. If one lottery first order stochastic dominates another lottery, its CDF needs to be exactly equal or always to the right of a lottery. What does it mean to the right? If I take this point here and I go all the way over, my blue line should be to the right of my pink line, or they can be equal. They just can't cross, and I'll talk about why they can't cross in a second. But you can see for every point on this CDF, the blue line is always equal to or to the right of the pink line. And so f of x first order stochastically dominates g of x, which means L3 is preferred to L4 by any utility maximizer. And so again, you might be thinking, well, this definition, sure, I can follow it. I don't know exactly why it makes sense, but maybe I'm starting to get it. Let me give you another extreme example. So here's an extreme example, just of a random lottery I came up with. Here's this best outcome, whatever it is. Here's the zero outcome right here. Well, the best lottery that I can think of is the lottery in which I have a 100% chance of getting the best outcome. So in green, this is the best lottery because I have a 100% chance I'm for sure gonna get the best outcome. On the other hand, the worst lottery is one in which I get zero with a 100% probability. And so the one that's gonna first order stochastic dominate the other lottery it's gonna be the lottery that's closer to the best lottery than the other one. So for example, if I, again, maybe I'll go in pink. So here's a lottery, I'll just make it up real quick. It goes like this. And then if I want to draw a lottery that first order stochastically dominates this pink lottery, this lottery needs to be closer to the best lottery than the pink line at any point, any probability. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw it like this. I'm gonna stay to the right. Maybe I'll come even for some of it, but what you can see is again, this blue line is closer or just as close to the best lottery as this pink one. So this blue lottery is gonna first order stochastic dominate the second one. Now, the reason they can't cross is because if they cross, then for certain values of probabilities, then one is gonna first order stochastically dominate the other. So for example, on this graph here, in this region, you can see the blue lottery stochastic first order stochastically dominates the pink line. But then right here, it goes the other way, where g of x is now first order stochastically dominating f of x. Then they switch back, 
And so we are not going to be able to use first order stochastic dominance here because of the fact that the lotteries cross. The reason that is, is the whole point of first order stochastic dominance is we're trying to say any utility maximizer, anyone who's looking at these two lotteries, regardless of their risk preferences, if one first order stochastically dominates another, then any utility maximizer would pick the lottery that first order stochastically dominates the other. And so the reason why crossing doesn't work is because if you're risk averse or risk loving or risk neutral, depending on where your risk preferences fall, you might not always choose f of x as opposed to g of x. It might depend exactly on your risk preferences. And here we're saying your risk preferences shouldn't matter. Anyone that you find should pick f of x over g of x if f of x first order stochastically dominates g of x. And the only way that anyone that you pick is going to pick f of x over g of x is if for all probabilities f of x is to the right of g of x. So the only way that'll work is if it looks something like this where they don't cross because anyone you find, anyone with any risk preferences will choose f of x over g of x because of this distribution. And so we would say that f of x first order stochastically dominates g of x. I know it's a little confusing. If you've got questions, if you're still confused, please type something in the comments below and I'll try to address it either directly or with another video. If this is helpful, if this really helps you understand what's happening. Also, please comment, please like this video. And again, if these videos in general are helping you out, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.